Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Lucid. We're hopping back into Garden of Good and Evil, and I'm playing the nation M.A. Airmore. It is turn 104. We are nearing the limits of human lifespan, and, uh, yeah. The game is about to go out of this boring phase, and it's about to get exciting again. So we have a message from Ryla. He says, maybe, but I thought you would have won a very long time ago. But you fail to deliver every time, and the fact that you try to swindle, swindle minor boons have only reinforced the belief that you're full of weakness. If you just put up a strong front and marched your armies upon the lands of the living, we might have conceded long ago, but you've delayed and let us learn and grow. I have a few plans, but I fear the end is far off, unless you succeed with a bum rush for thrones. So he's basically trying to challenge me to march on him. And I'm not... In no way, shape, or form am I just going to march my army into the water again. Um, not anytime super soon. Until I can get Utter Dark up. And get rid of all of his mages. Once all his mages are gone, then sure, I'll go underwater. So, most importantly, we cast Dispel. Dispel was successful. That is something that I was really hoping to see this turn. And I did. This is my current turn. I've submitted it already, but I could change it. So I'm really happy about this Dispel. Um, how the hell did this work? Did he teleport? He Cloud Trapeze this dude onto my main army. Oh, I know what he was doing. So this was kind of interesting. I was wondering, what the hell was he doing? Uh, what he did was... <clears throat> I guess... This, this is interesting. He's got enough items on this guy where it's triggering the AI that this might be a thug. And so it's triggering gym usage. So you can see I dropped Rigor Mortis. He's basically going to get to see my script. He sees Army of Gold go, right? So he sees that I'm fire resistant, which actually is the wrong script. I need to go back and change it. It should be Army of Lead. Um, and then I run in and kill him. So he gets to see my script. He wastes about 10 or 15 gems. So that was a really smart move. I'm really surprised that that triggered my uh, gem usage though, but it did. We also found a magic site. One more air gym. And we're gonna go look at some battles here. Uh, first one we're gonna look at is this one. So this is the battle with Nazca. You remember I said you could expect it this turn, and here it is in all of its glory. Nazca has about 2,000 units. I have about 1,000. Nazca has a ton of people. Let's just pause and take a look. All right, so we've got a king of elemental earth with some cool trample gear, right? Body ethereal, reinvigoration. This is not a very good pickup choice. Uh, shield of gold. Uh, vine shield would be much, much better, especially on a really good commander. Um, because undead are not affected by all. Then we have, normally it's good. Then we have Queen Storm Shadow, the immortal Koya. So this is his pretender. And you can see she's got quite a good bit of paths. Um, he's got air items on her, so it looks like he wants her to do some air casting. And then we've got a smattering of mages here. Um, many of them are kind of ramped up for death. This one's ramped up for earth. Okay, so there goes fog warriors, fire fend. Wrathful Skies, Firestorm. So he's got two area of effect. Uh, Battlefield-wide damaging spells up. And all of his uh, flyers jump in. Now these ones are particularly good. They've got the Sun Mace, which if you recall, does three times damage to undead. And they've got Fog Warriors on them. 
So they should be able to really hurt. Uh, but you can see first turn I go and put my own Fog Warriors up. And get ready for a long battle. So there goes... What was that? Something else went up. Mists of Deception. I think that makes Phantasmal Warriors run onto the battlefield. Arrowfend. I don't know why he bothered casting that, but okay. I don't have any archers. So this is pretty slow uh, while we have Mist Form up. Not much damage is being done. Some points, uh, I probably messed up on my formation some. I've got this guy who was putting up Rigor Mortis sitting at the back. Not really ideal. I've got this sensor at the back. He's probably going to get picked off. My Archbishop is alone, but fortunately she has really good armor. Um, so hopefully she'll survive and re pretty high magic resistance. But uh, yeah, I did not position my mages very well considering that we may have uh, flyers. So that was a mistake. There went Firestorm and Wrathful Skies again. So you can see a lot of my units are now, probably about a, a quarter of them are now out of mist form, as are about a quarter of his. And most of the battlefield-wide spells are dropped now, so you can kind of see what's happening. His mage support's kind of weak. Most of these guys are far enough. Because he sent his flyers in, I'm out of range of almost all of his evocation stuff. What he could have done is put his flyers on hold and attack. Um, and that would have allowed my guys to run farther forward, and then I might have been in range of his evocation. Because right now he's just doing Horde of Skeletons, which isn't really going to do much. He probably had them on Disintegrate. I'm going to fast forward a couple turns. Okay, so we can see... Um, I've taken some losses, but mostly I'm able to deal with his Sapayas, who, uh, while blessed, have a very weak bless. Right? Really not much. There's really nothing there. They get a little bit of undying, a little bit of reinvigoration, a little bit of strength. Not much. See, our Lictors are doing a good bit of damage. That Firestorm Wrathful Skies kind of hurts. I'm going to continue skipping forward. Um, the Sapayas are doing a good bit of work. They're mostly routed now. All my undead, this is about four turns ahead. Um, all my undead, my Chaffee undead, are all dead. And uh, my good undead are going to run in there. And you can see I basically won. He wasn't able to do... So if, if we kind of evaluate how Nazca did there, um, they did a really good job getting most all of the important battlefield enchantments up for a big battle. Um, they had a lot of chaff to keep my armies occupied. What they didn't do a good job of was getting evocation to, to hurt me. Uh, even though they did have Wrathful Skies and Firestorm up, um, a lot of it is because my guys are fire resistant. Firestorm doesn't hurt as much. And Wrathful Skies doesn't have a huge damage per second, especially without Storm. Oh, he does have Storm. Um, and yeah, Wrathful Skies just doesn't do that much damage per second. And this is Pretender, I believe. She's still fatigued up. She's probably going to die this turn. Oh, no, she won't. 105, she's got two more turns. 100. Yeah, she's going to fly away this turn. Oh, no, she's going to commit to a fight. Yeah, she's pretty damn tough just by herself. Holy shit, look at that. What was that? Wither bones, huh? I think she's fatigued out for a good long while now. Yeah, 126. 
So yeah, I think the main issue there was uh, I wasn't in range for evocation. If I was, I don't know if he would have won, but it would have been a lot closer. So yeah, there goes his pretender, but she's immortal and she died in friendly domain, so I think she will be teleported back to his capital. What I did do though was I also had a raiding force go take this fort. So he is unable to retreat, unless people are amphibious, so the king of mountains you can see made it back here. The Queen of Lakes is here also. So, most of his commanders, even if they ran, uh, they perished, and uh, that is the end of them. So I won a really decisive battle here against Nazca. He's got no significant army now with mage support uh, to fight back. So I'm going to take both of these, and then I'm going to run up here and try to nab this throne. Uh, and if I can do that, if I get both these, and then I run up and grab that throne, and then I get this throne... I think I need three more points to win. That's the Throne of Thor Thorns, so not a super good throne for me, and it's not going to help me win, really. Uh, so I probably have to... This is a level two throne. That would be a long way from my home base to make it, but it's possible. Anyway, that's a crippling defeat for Nazca. It's going to give me both these forts. If I get those forts and fort up here and here, it's going to cordon off a whole other area for the Armorian Empire. Um, we can see that Ryla is moving out with a pretty big army here. It's 530. Let's double check. No, it's not even that big. I don't know why they always look bigger than they are. It's like 350. So yeah, I don't think it would even hurt this. I mean, it would hurt, but not much. I think this fort's solid. It's got 500 defense, too. You'd have to sit on it for a long time. I'm not going to worry about... Uh... I'm not going to worry about Ryla attacking here. Um, I've got my air enchantment online. I'm casting a wizard's tower too because I've got um, I've got arcane nexus down, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Um, Stone heavens, where is that? That's right here. So I'm putting up a another fort right here, which will close off this area to invasion, and it will protect this where I have a fort coming up, which should be fine already, but it will definitely kind of secure uh, this province from enemy attack um, but yeah I'm gonna hang tight here um, I want to get utter dark up and then I'll fight I could mobilize the other thing I really need is I need my queen of um, of air elementals so I'm gonna have her cloud trapeze back into this fort and then they'll go as a unit again going without my queen would be uh, probably a big mistake so these guys are going to hang tight. Ryler's either going to sit here. Who knows what he'll do. But there's no move he can do that's going to hurt me. So he was probably hoping I would come out and he would have a fight. That didn't happen. So it's about to be a good game. I think we're, I think we're within a year of the game ending. I'm going to have this throne definitely within a year. I'm going to have Asphodel's capital within probably four or five months. Um... I probably, if I can defeat this army, I'm going to be able to probably take this throne um, very, very quickly. So, probably by the end of a year. I think if I get this one and this one, I think I think this is a level 2 throne, but it may be a level 1 throne. If I can get these two... The other thing is I'm going to break the will of the people playing. So it's very possible people just say good game. One, if they can't keep utter dark down, or if they can't get utter dark down, uh, and I get this throne, I've got this whole bottom continent. They'll probably just say, "Can we call it?" And at which point, I'll agree. We're not going to go through making them uh, play. But I, I think until now, it hasn't been very clear who's going to win. I think this turn, when uh, we put utter dark up, so let me show you how many gems I'm putting out in it. You see, four oh five. Yeah, those are all going into Utter Dark. So we're doing an overcast of 305. So I think this turn marks the beginning of the end, where uh, it's pretty clear that I'm going to win. And
And uh, yeah, I will accept an admission of defeat from them after this point. Uh, because what's going to happen is they're all going to become income negative, where they can't make any money. And uh, that's going to be the end of the line. So, uh, anything else? Yeah, we're going up Thaumaturgy. Uh, the reason is it is going to give me Vengeful Waters if I want to cast it, Dark Skies if I want to cast it, um, and Purgatory if I ever need to cast it. So those are all useful for me. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Basically. So yeah, we're basically hanging tight. Outer Dark is going up this turn. Um, our battle on top of Asphodel's Fort was successful. I didn't show you that. It's just a small little group versus a bunch of undead. We are doing damage to their fort. What does it say down here? We've started to destroy the gates, but need more time. So I'm going to bring more undead on top of it. And I believe this turn they will break through. And then I will have this guy at the back. Hopefully there's no... I might send one guy to scout inside first. See if they have astral mages with pearls on them. If they do... I might not use this guy as a thug. Um, but in le if they don't, I'm probably going to send him in and he will kill 90% of their free spawn. Which I will be very, very happy with. Though he could also die. I didn't really consider that. I really should try giving him a pearl. I have a lab here too. Let's give him a pearl. So, I think the way we'll do it, we'll alchemize one real quick. Will that really help? Maybe it won't help. Yeah, it won't help because he'll be fatigued out. I was going to say if we gave him a pearl, he could cast Phoenix Pyre. And then if he died, he would just pop back up. But I think the problem with that is that... Uh, he'll be fatigued out from the sleep vines. So really he needs like a... Do I have like a vine shield or something? No, not really. Yeah, not super ideal. Don't know how that will go. Um, the other thing we're doing is we're sending in this big army on top. No time like the present, eh? So I should have Utter Dark up this turn, so it will be nighttime, which will give me uh, some bonuses. On top of that, we're going to be doing Fog Warriors turn two, uh, Mass Flight turn three, and then Mist. And that will give us Storm and Mist, so he's going to have horrible accuracy, probably zero precision. Um, my troops are all going to be flying. I'll probably lose a third of them. Um, I'm scripted now correctly. I, I don't have Army of Gold anymore. It's Army of Lead and then Ground Army. So it should work. I think I have enough gems. I don't really have to worry too much about mag magic phase attacks. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have a big a big battle here next turn, potentially. If not, if he lets me siege the fort, um, then I will have defensive advantage when we do attack. But I don't think he will. I think he'll patrol. I think we'll have a big battle here next turn. Um, hopefully I don't lose that battle. If I lose that battle, I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. I wonder if I have... Do I have... So my Fairy Queen is Storm, Storm Power, Howl. I wonder if I have... Do I have Relief or anything? Oh, I do have Relief. I'll try that too. That might be good. Yeah. So... 
can't complain about that. Anything else? Now, so we're probably gonna have a big battle here. We're gonna camp out here and uh, wait for my Queen of Air Elementals. We're going to try to take both of these forts back from Nazca, and we have Utter Dark going up. So it's a really big turn. Thanks everyone for watching, and we will see how all of this plays out next turn.